Now Roman Catholic Church leaders or papacy are controlling every president and Sunday pastors around the world. So now they're pushing a the gay agenda in churches and outside the church. Leviticus 18.22 That shall not line with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Jude 1.7 Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the city about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Watch this. When President Obama uh, came out in support of the gay marriage, we announced it, we celebrated it, we applauded it in this congregation because we have spent years trying to teach this congregation that God loves everybody. We want to be on record that the NAACP now firmly opposes all efforts to restrict marriage equality. Civil marriage, like all civil rights provided by the government, must be provided equally to all. And like it's crazy because like a lot of these pastors, especially in the black churches, like they get up and they just talk about like gay people and, and how gay people are, are wrong and bad. and. And half of them are gay itself, you know. That's, I said that in jest, but that's no, an but underlying. that's interesting. That's why. Yeah, that's, a, we don't do weird stuff. Now, the other hip, 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 hypocritical aspect of that is our churches, Kira, are filled with same gender loving people. From the, from the music department to the pulpits. Black music, church music, where would it be without our same gender loving or gay musicians and singers? Not all of them are. But many have come to you and said, can't come oh, out. Oh, yes. Oh, and we're yeah. talking very powerful people yes, in the gospel industry. Yes, I've met them. Yes, ma'am. With tears in their eyes, they were afraid. There are people who come to me and say, I embrace your gospel of inclusion, Bishop, but I can't. It's not a theological issue with me. It's a business decision. I'll lose my flock. I'll use my money. I'll lose my parsons. I'll lose myself. I can't love everybody. I can't even love me, he could say. And I want to, I want to say to that group, and this is a wake-up call. Until the church... The church, black or otherwise, confronts, not combats, confronts this issue of human sexuality and homosexuality, which is not going away. Homosexuals and homosexuality are going on away. If every gay person in our church is left, or those who have an orientation or a preference or an inclination or fantasy, if everyone left, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have a church. <laughs> this is, yeah, that's interesting. Or fantasy. If everyone left, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have a church. <laughs> this is, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, there are gay doctors, police officers, attorneys. Look at the whole Catholic Church. About gays in the church. Um, your take on gays in the church, um, should they be allowed? Of course, it might seem like, a, of course, an easy answer. And if so, um, should gays be um, able to participate in the worship service? Pass it off. Yes. Yes, to what I question? Think they should. <laughs> they are. It's not. <laughs> um, they should be allowed. Jesus, again, he says, whosoever will, let him come. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, should they be allowed to come or should they be allowed to participate in the worship service? They participate in worship service now. Participating in church It's from the back door to the front door. It's... <laughs> It's nothing new, but uh, but it's existing now. I mean, every I don't say every church, but every church I've been to. Hello, guys. What is going on in the Presbyterian Church? It's become the Lesbian Church of the USA. These two women, Reverend Casey Clark Porter and the Reverend Holly Clark Porter, were ordained, co-ordained last week as joint ministers in the Presbyterian Church of the USA. And they are married to each other. The sad thing is, these two young women, one of them still in her 20s, they were married to men and they divorced their husbands after meeting each other in, se in the seminary, in the Presbyterian Bible School. And only a few short days after the Presbyterian Church changing its constitution to allow same-sex marriage, these guys, well, girls, who have, who have been married for some time, are now both pastors, ministers in the so-called church, 
the Lesbian Presbyterian Church. This is trampling the trampling the blood of Jesus underfoot. Here they are administering communion. I mean, this breaks my heart. Uh, even even their own wedding photographs show you that deep down they believe there ought to be one male and one female in a marriage. Otherwise, they wouldn't both they wouldn't be dressed as a man and a woman. One is the assistant minister at that church, and the other is a minister at a church called the Big Gay Church. Uh, I, I've been in ministry, uh, and I've been in the church uh, where we had homosexuals serving in ministry, and and it wasn't a problem for uh, our pastors. I mean, if we had that kind of thing happening in church, we wouldn't have nobody serving in leadership. Says Jesus, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrite! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer them that are entering to go in. Watch this. This video is coming from Sunday churches. What? You gonna sit in this porn sexual churches with your children? You want Christ in you, the hope of glory that the Bible says, or you want the devil in you, the hope of demons. Watch this. Contrary to that highly publicized prediction, the world did not end over the weekend, which means a number of preachers who live like rock stars will get to continue living the good life. How good? Here's Lisa Guerrero and the I Squad with a look at some who've been preaching prosperity who are living large. Fresh wind! Fresh! They are some of the most popular TV preachers in the country. We're family here! They urge the faithful followers to donate generously and in return, the Lord will bring them prosperity. I'm not going to be going to heaven and be broke when I get there. And there's no denying some people have prospered handsomely. Wow! The now pastors themselves, the they live like rock stars with huge mansions, private jets, and fancy cars. Their lifestyles are so lavish, six of them have been investigated by the U.S. Senate. Like Paula White, who lives in multi-million dollar homes in New York City and Tampa, Florida. And Creflo Dollar, he gets around in style, flying in private jets to preach around the country. He owns this mansion in an exclusive Atlanta suburb. Mr. Dollar, how do you Not one of them would agree to an interview lifestyle. about their opulent lifestyle. How did you justify your million dollar mansions in your jets to all of your donors, sir? Oh, yeah. But when it comes to opulence, few religious leaders compare to Kenneth Copeland. You and I are supposed to always have lives in this home outside Fort Worth, Texas. It has beautiful water views and comes complete with a boathouse. But that's not all. Copeland is an avid pilot, and here's his pride and joy, a $20 million Cessna Citation jet. It's the fastest private jet money can buy. He said he needed it to better serve the Lord, and proudly did a flyby for his followers after the church bought it. Shout it! But it's not just one plane. We found a fleet of planes registered to the church. And you won't catch him waiting in line at the airport because he's got his own, the Kenneth Copeland Airport, located right next to his mansion. I think Copeland is unbelievably greedy. Ole Anthony heads the Trinity Foundation, a religious watchdog group that worked closely with the Senate committee investigating Copeland and other TBB preachers. Televangelism alone is at least a two and a half to three billion dollar industry, untaxed, unregulated. That's right. By law, religious groups like Copeland's are exempt from federal taxes and they don't have to report how they spend their money to anyone. Amen. 
Copeland's church takes in tens of millions a year through donations and selling books and DVDs to his donors. She sent them a lot of money, a, a whole lot of money. When Christy Parker's mother died of cancer, she found diaries that showed her mother sent Copeland most of her life savings, hoping her faith and donations would cure her of her terminal disease. What do you think of Kenneth Copeland's lifestyle? TV doesn't do it justice. Their office furniture is probably worth more than most people's houses. It makes you sick. Oh my. Copeland refused our request for an interview, so we caught up with him at an event in North Carolina. Now, why you're living such a lifestyle of luxury off of church donations? Ma'am, I don't think we have time for this. Thank you. Thank you. Why won't you answer our questions? A hotel employee tried to prevent us from taping. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Come here. It's just a simple question, sir. Yes, and I'm going to give you a simple answer. Thank you. My lifestyle follows the scripture. We give, we believe, we're open. You have a fleet of private jets. Why is that necessary? You're a minister. How many private jets do you have? Right after that, he walked away. Although Copeland says he cooperated with the Senate investigation, the Senate committee disagreed, saying only two television preachers did, Joyce Myers and Benny Hinn. And the committee recommended that the IRS investigate further. They set up new world order so that they can control the world and bring everybody on the Roman Catholic Church. The affirmative task we have now is to create a new world order. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. But I often asked myself that we needed a new world order. Pope Benedict XVI is calling for a new world financial order in the third encyclical of his pontificate. Globalized economy. The document was released just hours before the G8 summit. So notice. When a Catholic Jesuit learns Sunday churches, they are doctrine, and they draw all their churches to so-called the mother of the church because they know they are doctrine and they can answer questions and preach so the members of the sunday churches they think that all the pastors are faithful pastors so now it's all about my pastor says my pastor says my pastor says. and this is the crying that a lot of times you hear from them instead of them to study to show thyself approved just like bible says they're making the flesh they are right on and some of them, when they learn the Sabbath truth, that is always Saturday, because they are pastors, it's been hematized them for so many years. So when they go and they talk to their pastors, instead of them to talk to God and make decision based on that says the Lord, they make their pastors make decision for them, because that's how bad they hematize them. They come right out and state exactly how they infiltrate any religious group they want. They'll come in pretending to be a Pentecostal, pretending to be a Baptist, taking the leadership role and then completely subverting it from the inside. Watch this. Holiness, may I present Archbishop Kayang Barsemian, primate of the Eastern Diocese of the Armenian Church in America. According to ecumenical protocol, the Eastern Orthodox would be first in, in the Catholic Church's ecumenical responsibility. The Legate and Ecumenical Officer of the Eastern Diocese of the Armenian Church in America and President of the National Council of Churches in the United States. Holiness, may I present President Dr. Donald McCoy, representing the presiding Bishop Mark Hansen of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Well, in this may I present Bishop Jeremiah J. Park, Bishop of the New York Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. 
Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Wesley Granberg Michelson, the General Secretary of the Reformed Church in America. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Dr. Clifton Kirkpatrick, the stated clerk of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in the United States. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Dr. William J. Shaw, President of the National Baptist Convention, United States. Your Holiness, may I present Bishop James Leggett, General Superintendent of the International Pentecost Holiness Church. In this, may I present Dr. Leith Anderson, President of the National Association of Evangelicals. Your Holiness, may I present Bishop David H. Benke, President of the Atlantic District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Dr. A. R. Bernard, Sr., President of the Council of Churches of the City of New York. You understand the language your holiness and this is how they call this power he think he is god that's what their teachings is all about friends religious leaders when they come to meet this power they weren't black notice dark color they represent the sinners and he represent god and now listen to what Bible says. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. This is the chapter the Protestant Sunday churches. They are forefathers. They used to protest against this power during dark ages. And they call them Antichrist. Notice Antichrist. But now you don't hear from Sunday churches anymore. Because they betray their forefathers. Let's start from verse 3. Notice 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the fallen away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed. The son of predation. Who opposes and exhort himself above all that is called God. All that is worshipped. So that he sit as God in the temple of God. Showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. Notice what it says in verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Pope Francis met with the ecumenical and interreligious delegates March 20th, who had attended his inaugural mass the day before. The representatives included Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, Sikh, and Jain leaders. Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople also had a private meeting with the new pope. The Bible says the mark of the beast means this power has a mark. The beast is a language that God is using for this power. And they themselves, they says in their own book, the book of Catechism, the old version, notice, they say Sunday worship is their mark of authority. The new version, they don't use the word authority, but at least, thank God, they still admit it, even the new version of Catechism. They still says they changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Friends, the mark of the beast is not worldly speculations that sometimes you hear. Some people says, well, it's computer chip. Unfortunately, you don't find in the Bible. And some people says, you know, it's 666. But according to Revelation 13 verse 18, actually 666 help you to find the beast. What I mean is to identify the beast. But the Bible says the mark, the reason why I repeat and I kind of stretch it because I don't want you to miss it. It's a deception. Notice the mark of the beast. It's clear. It's not a mark that anybody can see. It's a spiritual mark means they belong to the devil. Means they have cast their allegiance or they have given their allegiance to Pope the Antichrist. Daniel chapter 7 verse 17 says the four beasts which thou saw are the four kings who reign on the earth. Babylon is the first kingdom. Medo-Persia Empire was the second kingdom and Greece third kingdom. Rome fourth kingdom. 
So on Revelation 13 verse 18 it says, here is wisdom. Let him who have understand. Calculate the number of the beast. Is a number of a man. His number is 666. So according to Revelation 13 verse 18. 666 help you to identify the beast. Roman Catholic Roman numerals some of them have a value some of them doesn't but when you put all of them together it end up to 666 Constantine changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday but unfortunate Sunday churches they adopt Sun worship day for so many years they don't want to get rid of it but actually it's a pagan Sun worship day sunday worship look even the spellings you'll find out matter of fact if you look your calendar sunday is always begin as the first day of the week unfortunately they will skip and some people they don't know they will count monday as the first day of the week because according to revelation chapter 12 verse 9 the devil will deceive the whole world so it's a deception so the devil you know he's in the process blinding the, the people including the christian though friends if you go to church sunday notice the first day church now you don't have the mark of the beast according to revelation 14 and 13 unless the law it's an enforce that's why now you hear different country they try to force in the people to not sell or do anything on Sunday because they try to enforce the law but according to Bible notice United States is the one who's gonna cause the whole world to worship the beast they are Sun worship day means Sunday worship according to Revelation 13 so whenever United States enforce the law and every country also gonna enforce because they control the whole world every president on the Roman Catholic Church we know according to history jesus christ rose from the dead sunday so even his dead body he kept the sabbath just like the bible says all things was made by him when he finished his work the end of creation according to genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 he kept the sabbath and also when he finished his work of redemption he says it is finished and he kept the sabbath even his dead body and he rose from the dead Sunday that the Bible says was the first day of the week according to Luke chapter 24 verse 1 to 3 friends Saturday is always the Sabbath the seventh day of the week notice and again it's always Saturday and that's why the Bible says the seventh day is the Sabbath Jewish nation even though I'm not Jewish they still keep the Sabbath Saturday and also encyclopedia you will find it even different language if you speak spanish sabado means saturday friends this is a beautiful time in history because we only one step away from heaven the mark of the beast the worship issue in revelation chapter 13 if you get time read it because revelation chapter 13 verse 12 it's a worship issue and verse 15 it's a worship issue and verse 8 is a worship issue and the bible help us to understand that behind the scene revelation 13 is the devil he wants the whole world to worship him friends you have to escape you have to study your bible Christ is calling you whether you are Christian or not whenever you hear Sunday worship in any countries do not accept it God is going to protect you Bible says our bread and water will be sure according to Revelation 16 whenever National Sunday law or Sunday law come to history if you accept Sunday law you're going to receive the wrath of God that is poor out without mixture that's why God is warning the whole world right now that we don't have to receive the mark of the beast. Today's Sunday Law News Report features an interesting news item that ought to make you sit up and pay close attention. Now, take a look at this. It's a massive encounter with the Pope. The family is coming from five continents for this special pilgrimage and some one-on-one -on -one time with the Bishop of Rome himself. This morning, the Pope is once again breaking from tradition. 
this time at an annual event for families where 150,000 families from 70 countries join the Pope in Rome to profess their faith. Now, for the first time, hundreds of children and elderly people are standing side by side with the Pope. Instead of in the audience, emphasizing the importance of different generations. The Pope saying rest. Saturday, So many families are there. The Vatican City wants to be known as the capital of the family. The Pope says he'll close out the event, blessing all families around the world. What an event, huh? And quite an event. You know, it's really interesting. There was a report out this morning that says tourism in Rome has actually gone up no since kidding. this Pope yeah, arrived. His popularity wow. continues to rise. Amazing. Great to see you, Gio. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Who doesn't want a social day devoted to families? Who doesn't desire a day where the emphasis is on love for our family and everyone else's? It's a great idea in light of the current attack on traditional family values. But let's take a closer look at this, shall we? When we shine the light of the gospel onto this new satanic effort to recognize Sunday as the day of rest, we'll see that this is just the beginning of persecution for Sabbath keepers. The first world meeting of families took place in 1994 and Subsequent annual meetings took place in Rio de Janeiro, Rome, Manila, uh, Milan, and again last year in Rome. The Pope has appointed the next Family Day meeting to be held in Philadelphia in 2015. Now friend, what does all this mean? What is this Family Day all about? The Pope desires that all families have a work-free Sunday. Families should be free from work so that on Sunday, children could be together with their parents and relatives and go to church as well. The Pope also suggests that we should discover the true meaning of Sunday observance on this family day. The good news of the family is a very important witness of evangelization, which Christians can communicate to everyone by being witnesses to life. He said the church must give attention and show spiritual closeness. Now it's interesting that the UN and the Vatican are working together for this Family Day, which will be each and every Sunday. Families will have a rest upon this day, be together with the children and go to church and so on. Do you see the strategy? The Pope desires to promote Sunday as the day of rest for all families throughout the world. He calls Sunday the family day. The previous Pope Benedict said, and I quote, by defending Sunday, one defends human freedom. Benedict said this during his weekly general audience in St. Peter's Square, just after he had attended a family day gathering in Milan, Italy. Pope also said, and I quote, Sunday, must be a day of rest for everyone, so people can be free to be with their families and with God. The Pope clearly stated that he wanted to come to the defense of free time, which is threatened by a kind of bullying, he says, through demands of work. He continued, Sunday is a day of the Lord and of, a man, and of man, a day which everyone must be able to be free, free for the family and free for God. This is in the Catholic News Service, June 2012. There it is, friend, straight from the beast himself. Friend, this is so crystal, crystal clear. The next step is the enforcement of a Sunday law. Everything else is now in place. Everyone else is on board, and now only waiting for life to be breathed into the Sunday law. So when the Pope says that we should have Sunday as a day of rest for the family, he's promoting the counterfeit, unbiblical day of rest. Sunday means the S-U-N day and not the S-O-N day. The test lies before us whether we will worship him who created heaven and earth and all that is in them, or we will worship the beast and receive its mark. This is dealing with worship, my friend. Whom will you worship and serve? 
Will you have God as your authority or will you have the Pope as your authority? Will you be loyal to the Creator or will you be loyal to people and their laws against God's law? This is the test that lies right before us. May the Holy Spirit help you and may God help you as you follow Him. This secret society's Roman Catholic Church leaders also infiltrate new organization of Seventh-day Adventists or SDA the Selective Message Volume 1 page 204 Ellen G. Y. says the conference churches are new organization whenever you get time read it they change our three inches logo 1995 they brought this new logo, this is yellow six frame all Sinai Triangle Secret Society logo because they think they're going to overcome Seventh-day Adventists. But praise the Lord, they cannot overcome those we on the foundation of Adventists. Three angels messages, those were building the foundation of many generations that Isaiah 58 verse 12 and also Jeremiah 6, 16 and 17, back at chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 and Jude 1 verse 3 says, if you visit every seven day Adventist and if you don't see this two big chart that you see on the screen, don't go. Come out fast as possible because you're not going to see Seventh-day Adventist teachers or pastors. But unfortunately, you're going to see ravening wolves, Roman Catholic Church leaders that are preterned that they're Seventh-day Adventists. And they're going to lead you to hell because the Bible says if a blind leads blind, they both will fall into a dish. If you want to watch a lot of present true videos that will prepare you in this last days, visit the SouthernThunders.com. You can download a lot of videos or audios for free and watch them and share them with everybody that you can. Spread this video fast as possible on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, every website and every place that you can.